To thee we come, O Lord, our God. participate in this holy sacrifice and now let us make an examination of our consciences and now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Say to the Lord, refuge and fortress, my God, in whom I trust, and who trust. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God our Father, you revealed the glory of your Son and admonished us to hear his divine word. Help us to draw together in faith and love and to proclaim him as our Lord and Savior through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray, O God, the creator and redeemer of all the faithful, 
We gather on this day to remember and pray for the repose of the souls of our late departed sister and brother, for Helen Kislowski, for James Crawford Sr. and Regina Lane Sheldon. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would grant them forgiveness of their sins. May our prayers this day obtain for them the perpetual light by which they were promised. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. rejoice over me. Lord, 
Come, says my heart, seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, Two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice and said, This is my chosen son, Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. These words are taken from the epistle of St. Paul, the apostle to the Philippians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, a couple of days ago, we woke up to the news that 49 innocent men, women, and children were killed at Christ Church, New Zealand. I think all of us paused for a moment and thought how tragic such an event was for those 
who were in those temple mosques and all those who had seen and heard the terror of cries and screaming. What is it with our world? Why is there so much evil and people that are bent on showing hatred and anger? I believe that we are given a choice. You know, they say that some of the greatest truths are the simplest. And one of the lines that I think is so appropriate today as we talk of the transfiguration of Jesus is one that I have said on several occasions during my sermon, where St. Paul, who he himself was a persecutor of the church, and who had seen the blinding light later on telling him that it was Jesus, that he changed, he became transformed, he became a different person because the Lord touched him. And later on in one of Paul's letters, he said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed for the renewing and by the renewing of your mind. He knew what he was talking about because he himself was transformed. Think of the simple fishermen. They probably had a basic faith, but it was important for them to make a living. And maybe their prayers were in that boat. And maybe one of the things that they prayed for was a good daily catch so they could fill the mouths of their families. But yet when the blessed Lord came and he said, come, follow me. What do we read in scripture? They left everything and they followed him. They were transformed. They were changed when the Lord called and said, come and follow me. My brothers and sisters, we read throughout the New Testament in the gospel of Jesus Christ, how people were transformed and they were changed when the Lord came in their lives, whether it be the fishermen or a tax collector. There's even the story of the one woman who had a hemorrhaging issue that took place many, many, many years. And out of desperation, she reached out and she touched his cloak and she was healed. My brothers and sisters, when Christ comes into our lives and we accept him, when we reach out to him and we have faith in him and we have faith in his divine <clears throat> words and what he is saying is absolute truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who sought the Lord truly in their hearts found the Lord. My brothers and sisters, we see a lot of things that are happening in the world. And we need to see these things, unfortunately, to give us separation of what is temporary and what is eternal. And I'm saying that the good Lord Jesus Christ also said, Seek and you will find. If you truly seek the Lord, you will find him. And we become transformed. I mentioned in this week's bulletin that the word transfiguration and the word transformation come from the same Greek word. And just as Jesus showed to Peter, James, and John that glorious body, in which he became transfigured unto them. He gave us a glimpse into our own divinity. 
my dear brothers and sisters, be transformed and realize that it is not just an overnight thing or something that comes within a moment. But as often as you seek him, you will find him. As often as you ask him, he will answer you. Fix your minds on those things that are eternal, his words, and not what is temporary. I think that there would be less evil in the world if people set their minds on a different path. Jesus says a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. It is by their fruits you will know them. And we see the bad fruits. We see the anger and the hatred that is given unto others. But yet Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit, of love, mercy, kindness, and forgiveness. May we, my brothers and sisters, see within Jesus a glimpse of that which truly exists within each and every single one of us. For we have received the divine light in where God made us in his own image and likeness. And strive on a daily basis to put away all those things that do not belong, but rather those things that will last. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, during today's Mass, let us remember the victims of New Zealand.
and walking in sin since redeem me and have mercy upon me. My foot hath always stood in the right path. In the church I will adore and praise you, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we offer you that sacrifice which Jesus has made. May we who share these gifts be filled with your peace and love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. O Lord our God, look with favor upon the gifts we offer you this day on behalf of of the souls of your faithful departed, Helen Kislowski, James Crawford Sr., and Regina Lane Sheldon. Grant that their souls may be united with you in eternal happiness. All of this we ask through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit and our one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in your goodness and help us to curb our unbridled vices. As we remember this day, the transfiguration of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the voice that spoke, saying that he was your only Son, may this 40-day fast of your Son, Jesus, bring us together with him unto eternal glory. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. <clears throat> Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true 
orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. We pray for the sick, the suffering and the dying, for the homeless and the hungry, for the unemployed, for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all the victims in New Zealand, as well as all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow in their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. manner after supper taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands again giving thanks to you he blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins as often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you 
a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember this day your servants, your handmaidens, Helen Koslowski, James Crawford Sr., Regina Lane Sheldon, as well as all those who lost their lives this past week in New Zealand. All who have gone before you, O Lord, and now sleep in your peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for their, your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. This commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body, Lord and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
Hear our prayers have been sent this day to thy majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. especially last week. I bring to mind that today we are offering prayers, special intentions for the repose of the souls of Helen Kislowski, offered by daughter Peg and family. We are also offering prayers for the repose of the souls of James Crawford Sr., offered by his son James Crawford Jr., and Lynn Crawford, and also for the repose of the soul of Regina Lane Sheldon, offered by Lynn Crawford. I bring to mind that following this morning's Mass, we will hold our annual parish meeting, and an invitation is extended to all to come and partake. We will um, we'll, we'll try to move along so that um, uh, we can take care of this within the next four hours. <laughs> um, I, uh, I do to bring to mind that tomorrow, Monday, at 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, parish committee to meet. I bring to mind, just as yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, on Tuesday, March 19th, is St. Joseph's Day. And so Holy Mass will be offered at 9 o'clock. Invitation ex ex is extended to all of you. I bring to mind that on Friday, March 22nd, um, at 7 o'clock in the evening, we will have Lenten Penitentials, um, Bitter Lamentations, Part 2, extended invitation again to all of you. On Saturday, March 23rd, 8.30 in the morning, uh, the making of pierogi, we call upon our men and our, our ladies. I wish to thank the men and, and ladies who came yesterday who helped to make the pierogi for the upcoming spring uh, food and bake sale. Um, and next Sunday, because we wanted to have it last Sunday, but the weather was really bad, next Sunday we will at um, 8.45, and please uh, come in, that during the season of Lent we usually hold a general confession. And so next Sunday at 8.45 prior to Mass, 
we will have general confession for adults. I was very um, happy yesterday to uh, see Mrs. Helen Rodak, uh, who was celebrating her 100th birthday. And Sue, you have a card uh, for all of you to please take the time and sign. I also have a couple of cards with me that I'll bring into the parish hall to be signed for those who are sick and recovering. And, and our prayers are for all, for Mary Durkee, for Jenny Damara, and for Cindy Benjamin. May you keep all of them in prayer as well as all those who are sick and um, in need of God's prayer. I bring to mind that um, Easter flower donations are now being taken. Forms uh, for these gifts can be found in the vestibule of the church. Um, please see Alice Majewski, um, who will be uh, in the vestibule of the church. The forms are pretty straightforward because many, many of the donations are going to be given in memory of loved ones. And again, my dear brothers and sisters, I ask that in your prayers as we come before the altar of God, that you remember the killing of all those people in New Zealand. It doesn't matter. You know, I served as a paramedic for many, many years, and when I would come uh, to a sick child, it didn't matter whether or not it was a boy, a girl, black or white, tall or short, children are children, and we all have been made in God's image, and we are all children of God. So please remember, one of the biggest things that we have to deal with nowadays is people that say things and they really create, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire. We need to unify as God's people and not be separated, irregardless of what our political affiliation is. God's people are God's people. And as Jesus said, when he was shown that coin that had the image of Caesar, he gave us that wisdom. Render unto God what is God's and render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. We came from God. He is our first and we should offer everything unto him first. So again, God's blessings be with all of you. It's good to see you, Jim, and, uh, and the guests, and we pray that God be with all of us as we step from this church. Nick Benjamin Pofaloniosis Christus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed sisters and brother, for Helen Kislowski, for Regina Lane Sheldon, and for James Crawford Sr., eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.